Hi, this is Gary Thomas with another episode of Azo TV. I'm here at the EMC Conference 2012 in Manchester, UK, and I'm talking to Arno from X Radio, who's going to tell us a little bit about why they're here this week. Thanks, Gary. Well, we're here. X Radio is here uh, today, really, uh, to show the expanse of X-ray microscopy and how it's progressing in the microscopy community. Uh, X-ray, X-Radio got its start from uh, really the backbone and the technical backbone of the synchrotron community. Uh, our founders came from that environment and have used elements of X-ray focusing optics to image and have now incorporated those into laboratory systems. So essentially what we do is 3D imaging and in particular non-destructive 3D imaging. We do this with a variety of different length scales. We also look at a variety of different materials. Uh, typically, life science, material science, geoscience, and electronic samples are our image. Now we're really breaking the barriers of resolution and also contrast uh, to see different materials uh, at different length scales. So an example uh, behind me here is a, quite, a, quite a nice example of looking at not only three-dimensional images, but particularly in the material sciences, looking at imaging as a function of time. So you can really understand how a microstructure evolves over time and changes its structure as a function of some external environment. So we do that by placing a sample next to an X-ray source and detecting it with a, an evolved detection system that uses lenses and proper optics and has evolved the, the world of micro-CT to really bring us into the age of X-ray microscopy. So getting back to the result, what you see on here is the ability to non-destructively image within this battery. This is a coin cell, and we're looking at the anode um, and looking at a virtual cross-section of its microstructure that occurs on many different length scales. Now you can segment this, meaning you can separate each particle into its individual constituents, and then compare two different data sets before it's been charged and after it's been charged to look at quantitatively how the particles have changed in size and draw a number of scientific conclusions from this uh, and also to develop new and more reliable battery materials. Now moving a little bit further down, what sets us apart from the rest of the community uh, is really the incorporation of a number of optical components into the X-ray microscope that's been brought into the laboratory and is not only available at the synchrotron. You see that we, we can maintain resolution that's better than 700 nanometers and better than a micron over very large source distances and working distances. We can maintain this over many tens of millimeters, which means you can look at the small regions of a larger sample inside, and you can also look at it inside of in situ stages, which are tension or compression or heating and cooling. So we're looking at the evolution of microstructure as a function of an external environment. Now we're really, we have a few different platforms. Um, I'd like to describe them in a little bit more detail also, how they're relevant to other types of microscopy and how we're correlating it to light microscopy and electron microscopy. Over here we're actually displaying what the different length scales of X-ray imaging can offer. In particular, our Versa XRM platform from x ray it's looking at sub-micron, sub-700 nanometer true spatial resolution, but going down to usable voxel dimensions on the order of 100 or 200 nanometers. In theory, this goes below there as well. But we perform repeat imaging and even are able to image sub-volumes of different samples that are on the order of millimeters. But now imagine taking that level and even increasing the resolution by another order of magnitude. Now this is revolutionary in the laboratory space. It's being done at a few synchrotron beam lines across the world. But we've incorporated, we've developed this beam line that sits in your lab, which uses a more or less conventional laboratory source. And it achieves 50 nanometer resolution. That's the Ultra XRM L200 platform. And now we're looking at samples and sample volumes that are on the order of tens of microns to look at the finest details of structure that overlap with some electron microscopy techniques. Now it's also non-destructive, so we're looking at the four-dimensional and in-situ characterization of materials. But it's really the first step in a long, larger workflow in the central microscopy laboratory of, of doing a full three-dimensional characterization before sending it to the final post-mortem analysis uh, 
via serial section, SEM, TEM, as you see below. Now this can be done correlative and it's actively being done by a number of, of, of institutes around the world. Uh, but to be able to push resolution down to 50 nanometers spatial resolution and voxel dimensions down to about 16 nanometers uh, is quite unique. So if people want to find out more about X-Radio, where can they go? Well, Gary, they can go to xradia.com. We have a number of examples, both from uh, from the life sciences as well as the material sciences, but also the blossoming field of uh, geosciences and, and, and the electronics industry. We're all non-destructive, three-dimensional and four-dimensional imaging. Okay, thanks Arno. Thank you.